And now, the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Suck it and suck it and suck it, suck it, suck it. Hey, it's the Bonfire Comedy Central Radio Series XM95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. Suck it and it, suck it, suck it. Yeah. And we are live. It's Tuesday? Can yeah, I had work. a rough one with that, too. Woke, woke up together. today conducting myself as it was a Wednesday. Do you Freaked think- out I didn't get seller spots. Oh, Tuesday's yeah. Tuesday's when they came in, and I was like, well, I, I put in for I only put in for one yeah. day, and she usually gives that to me if I do that because I'm running on the road so much. Yeah. And with between uh, podcasts and radio, I have one night I'm able to do the seller sometimes. Sometimes I don't even put in for that so I can relax. But so when I do put in for it, I'm like, she'll give me that spot. That's waking up. And I thought I didn't get it today. And I, 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 I did that thing where I wrote where I was like, I made up a whole thing. I said, wait, you actually went all the way through with writing to her? R- wrote and said, been in that club for 15 years, 16 years. Wrote and said, no, there's no way. Yeah, maybe yeah. close. 15 o- years. Oh, two? 14 years? Yeah. I, uh, I st- yeah, well, no, I wasn't in O2, but it was shortly thereafter. Um, wrote a thing where I was like, yes, I had a major phone problem, but got a new phone today. All a lie. Made that all up. <laughs> she goes, to her to go, I, I go, I go, did you end up giving the uh, things out? And she goes, today is Tuesday. And I write, I'm an idiot. Oh. <laughs> so I made up a whole lie for nothing. Dude, did you, was it the thing where you woke up? It was the first thing you thought about, so it woke you up. Nope. Where you ever have like, do you ever have that where you kind of wake up, you're like half sleepy, and then a yes. thought makes you stay awake, where you're like, "Fuck, I never responded to this." And you're like, "I gotta get up," or like, you know, say, like, "Oh shit, an appointment? Is that appointment today?" That happened. That happened to me Monday because I forgot to put in my. You know, you put in your seller avails on Sunday, and I woke up on Monday like fuck because I came back from Winnipeg and just laid on my couch and fell asleep. And I was like, "Fuck," and woke up at like Did six a.m. Avails with like the idea of like I was in Canada. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Total oh, move. Yeah, I've done that. It was the. I made it sound like Did it you was, get anything today. I made yeah. I made it sound like it was eighteen forty eight. I was like, I traveled from Canada, deep into Winnipeg, back to New York City. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying I, to get word to you. As I gather my mind and my spirits, I realize <laughs> I did not contact you with my weekly avails. <laughs> SD, I hope this letter finds you well. On the morrow of Sunday, I forgot to send in my avails. SD is the booker for the comedy star. Yeah. Make that clear. I mean, she's pretty infamous at this point now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been in movies and movies, all the scenes and shows. But basically, you put in, uh, you tell her every week which nights you're around, and then she decides what nights you and when you get spots. So it's a big deal. So every week, if you work at the cellar, you know you put in on Sundays and you get the spots on Tuesdays. But no, Jay, every week it's I call Wednesday. her and I tell her what days I'm going on. You and go, then, and, hey. then I, and then if she doesn't write back on the wrong day early, I panic and then send a bunch of lies about pretty good. what I've been through. It's a pretty good process. It's a, uh, is, is it the best process? It, no, but is it, it's my process. Is it, it mine? Yeah. The way we have the screen <laughs> yeah, sure. pause right now, DJ Khaled looks like he's just watching CNN. <laughs> how, 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 and he's how like, to... oh. We that's... the best, though. Yo, that's some Vegas drama going on. We the best, though. Yo, if my boys was there. Uh, my son was there. I swear to God. Play up. Uh, I'm so sick of DJ Khaled's uh, Khaled son. Why? He's a, it's a huge success. And he's seven months old. He is ramming him down everybody's chops. I mean, I, it's, a, it, it's like, I promise you, many, there's got to be many, many of his colleagues who are like, all right, dude. <laughs> Like, are you talking about like uh, guys that work on his albums, like the uh, like the no. producers and stuff, where they're like the guys, the audio engineers, who are like, okay, yeah, I know you got to take a picture of your baby, but we got to loop this track. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like Fat Joe and the people Bro. who were like on his thing, were like, all right, motherfucker, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, it was the funny thing. Uh, there was in the black comedy circuit, there was a guy. Uh, the story always made me laugh so hard. Uh, Gerald Kelly, his son Isaiah, met, Isaiah Kelly. Did comedy. I, I, I'm not sure if he still does. I'm, probably, I'm sure he probably still does. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. But uh, he did it for a while. He did it like into his adulthood for sure. But when he was a little kid, yeah, he would have him go up on these black shows. And he would write for jokes for his son. And I'm not sure how that changed or whatever through time. Yeah. But he used to write jokes for his son and uh, have his son go out there. And then uh, them talking to me. But they were going to do the Kings of New York concert. Yeah. The New York Kings of Comedy, uh, which was talent. Rob Stapleton. Uh, Capone, I can't remember who else, but uh, all like the big black guys. Will, I think Will Sylvans was part of it. Drew Frazier, yeah, that's what it was. And Gerald Kelly, and Gerald was like, "Hey, I was thinking we should have Isaiah open up the garden to do the theater at the garden." He goes, "The garden show," and they're like, "Motherfucker, this isn't like 
Fucking, you know, yeah. like Avenue D, late night comedy. It's the fucking know, theater at the it's garden. It's fucking theater at the garden, man. He goes, you can't throw, you want to throw your son up there while people are taking their seats? Like, oh. why would you do it to your son and oh. why would you do it to our show? Man, something about the my, the mental mindset of stage parents, they really do not care about the kid's well-being as much as they just want to use that kid to get ahead. They also don't care about the, the comfort or thing of others. Dude, we filmed this pilot. I wrote on this pilot. I wasn't in it, but I wrote on it, and I won't say whose pilot was or what network it was for, but it was like a hidden camera show kind of thing, and one of the stunts was that this girl played a stripper, and uh, during the lap dance, two people would interfere with the lap dance. Like As the lap dance was about to start, um, I would walk in with a kid... And be like, hey, you got, I was like the piece of shit boyfriend. And I'm like, hey, you got to watch the kid tonight. And I leave the kid with the stripper and the guy in the room. And she'd be like, go, go color in the corner. You know, it was like one of those things. You just saw what kind of pieces of shit dudes were. But the mom of the kid was so on board with this that we're like, calm the fuck down, lady. She's like, you're a comedian. I'd love to come see you. I'm like, all right. You know, she's yeah. just like, there's like this desperation with like stage moms where you're like, yeah, calm the fuck down. Yeah, lady. I was around so many. Uh, oh, IFC. Yeah, on uh, Z-Rock. Z-Rock. Yeah, yeah. there's so many kids in that show. I mean, one of the things was the guys played kids' birthday parties was how they made their money. Yeah. And so there was a lot of scenes of kids' birthday parties. And there was one lady, me and Dave Smith, I remember like being really grossed out by her. She was talking about her nine-year-old son who's running around the room with a Superman cape on. <laughs> She was like, he already has a girlfriend. It's like so crazy. Like she's been, she is just beautiful. And she's a girl from, uh, you know, whatever, Kenosha, Wisconsin, moved here to be an actress or whatever. It's like, you're talking uh, about nine year olds. Yeah, that's, that's just like, like a like, lady. It's like, she goes, uh, he can't go on one audition without, like, to, like to all the little girls there just being like, what's that? And this is kids like, rah, 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 yeah, I'm a super rah. man. She goes, I mean, he's, he's doing that. She goes, not, I'm seriously, not I'm not joking. Pussy addict. I mean, the kid yeah. is. I mean, this I can't kid. take him anywhere. He is trying to fuck everybody. It really, it's a lot. It's a lot. I'll call him. I'll say, "Hey, you want to go to Chuck E. Cheese for dinner? You've earned it." And he's just rocking sniz up in his room. He goes, "Mom, drop me by towel. I'm gonna do some blow, <laughs> suck some some Swedish model pussy, <laughs> and then I'll be back for juice box and sleepy sleeps." He goes, Mom, I'm getting on the fly fly. Yeah, he goes, can you, uh, like, the little girl pulls her pussy out, and he's like, can you airplane it in? He goes, here it comes. He goes, I finished it all. That's my son, Raul. He is a <laughs> pussy hound. It's like, what are you, a producer in Hollywood? Anyways, Deborah, I'm a terrible parent. <laughs> he is rocking ass. Yeah. Dude, stage parents are gross. Yeah, they and really DJ are. And DJ Khaled's become that, for sure. Do you think he's... He's yeah. ramming this kid down everybody's throat, and no one cares. Are you... What do you have right here, Christine? This is the five most insane stage mothers. Oh, boy. Look <laughs> well, at like that. Do, yes. Well, of course, leading off the pack, the queen piece of shit. Of course. Chris Jenner. Uh, which Black Lou loves. Black dudes do love Chris Jenner because the Kardashians have done more for black people than uh, the dunk for black dick. Oh yeah, just like specifically for black for dick. black dick. You're right. Yeah, you're right for black dick. Sh- they did that they did more for black dick than the new tighter fitting basketball uniform. But it really is like, uh, yeah, she her style. She created like the West Coast offense for Black Dick. It just thrives. <laughs> it just thrives. I it, mean, holy shit, dude. Run, yeah. The, several of Triangle them right now offense. are just knocked up by fucking black oh, celebrities. Well, uh, what's his name? Uh, Travis Scott just got uh, Ky- Kyrie? Kylie. 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 The tiny one that got her face all redone to look like a fucking... Yeah. Who people are yelling... By the way, now people are yelling out that uh, it's not even his kid. It could be... Tigers. The person who's the kid of... The, yeah. the Black China, the Robert Kardashians act. It's like so gross and incestuous. Yeah. Christine, you come from a real lot of trash. No, Armenians are usually really racist. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's what it's the all fuck? the mother. Is that, is that true? Armenians? Yeah, usually... yeah, they're called Sevs. Black, what they call black people. Mm-hmm. Really? And they're super, yeah. but they also, anybody they all sleep who's... sleep at 7-Eleven, the one seven eleven in Armenia. <laughs> you just say seven. Anybody who's not Armenian is an Odad, and that's like awful too. So, like, non-Armenians. Yeah, non-Armenians. So, do you think this is just a way of them being like... I believe that because it's an inbred-looking culture. Well, the mom's not Armenian. So, her dad was Armenian. Yeah, and he's dead, so... 
Yeah. What's Christine the, what? said yesterday, Armenian mixes well. It's actually a pretty gross, just Armenian people. <laughs> just regular. Like, we saw girl, on, it's, like we bake, saw, it's like baking chocolate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah semi-sweet like, yeah, versus non unsweet yeah, 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 it's very bitter. It's just That's, cocoa powder yeah, mix, versus... Uh, if you mix it. But she said if you mix it, it's uh, it, it becomes good. But we were watching a girl who was like full Armenian... She was a fighter. On, she's on the on the new season of Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. She got knocked out immediately. She's the only MM, female MMA fighter in all of Armenia. And she was just fucking odd looking. They look like they're weird, like, puppet people. Puppet people? Well, because of that, you can imagine. I mean, it's a really ancient culture, but now with that, it's probably a bit inbred at times. Well, I mean, look what they're doing with, uh, you know... Take a <laughs> Every person, no one smiles in a picture. All the faces are like, it's just another day to I'll make try. money and try drive Jaguar. Eat. Try to eat. Drive Jaguar. Drive Jaguar. I love jewelry and Jaguar. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, yeah, there she is. Yeah, she's all right. I'll throw it to her. No, that's a, that is... You wouldn't actually, and she may have gotten her nose done. A lot of Armenian girls get their nose. Done. Is that is that that's pretty common? Yeah, they say that I N is I'm all nose. Are you full Armenian? No, I'm half. Okay. Oh yeah, half breed. Yeah. Forgot about that. Half breed. Half breed. Christine didn't have to get her nose done because she's a half breed. Um. Well, let's go back to the list of stage moms. Mm-hmm. Armenian noses? I mean, you're really going after your own, huh, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the bulbous noses on these freak fucks. So this is Radar.com. Is this Radar? Yeah. What website is this, Christine? This is Newser.com. Yeah, sounds made up. Yeah. Uh, Chris Jenner has determined to make her daughter Kim Kardashian. All right, so Chris Jenner is on the stage mom list, obviously. Jay Barrymore saw that coming. I think yeah. she was like in orgies and shit with her daughter. Was auditioning daughter Drew for commercials before Drew even celebrated her first birthday. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. And of course, <laughs> oh wait, no, maybe it wasn't orgies with her. And of course, now the two women are estranged. Uh, that's, a, that's are they still currently? She doesn't talk to her. Remember, her mom did Playboy though. Little little light thin beaver, if my if memory correct. Light thin uh, beaver. Memory serves me a light thin full beave. Okay, but like it was thinning hair, like an older woman. Um. Oh, dude. Uh, Jade Barrymore. Yeah, but she. I mean, can we? Find Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore was like smoking cigarettes and like drinking regularly when she was like twelve. Oh yeah, Drew Barrymore was real trailer. She was like trailer eleven. She nailed it. I wonder if Fell Dog ever got a slice of that pie. <laughs> oh <I don't> no. <know. laughs> <laughs> what I want to bring up, uh, and we'll skip ahead, is that Drew Barrymore's mom? Yeah. Oh, what a crazy... Yeah, yeah. I think it was the 90s she did a fucking uh, oh, play with. Maybe it was like early, early 2000s, too, but there's definitely pictures of her pussy, and it was nice. Um, the one I want to skip ahead to was Kate Gosselin. Yeah. Is she... That's can, a John and Kate plus eight girl. Can you find when she, the Today interview? Can you find that when her daughter won't talk and she gets upset? Oh, dude, I love shit like this where it shows their craziness. Oh, it shows them snap. You're yeah. Like, damn God damn, I love watching that kind of stuff. That's like when they show, you know, like, that's always in movies where the killer snaps, where he's like cool for the whole movie, then they get him and he goes, I did it! I murdered her! What did you want me to do? And, like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck, you're nuts. Um, Miley Cyrus's mom, Tish. Real close to Trish. Well, they said yeah, they said Shirley Temple's mom. Yeah, which Shirley Temple's. It's like, yeah, of course, the twenties. It was either the Factory or Hollywood. Uh, Kate of Gosling. Do they have that video of her being awful to the kids or something? and her, can you believe this, 13-year-old twins now. We're going to talk to all of them in a minute, but first, how they became Kate plus eight. I, I don't know. They fucked a bunch. Oh, yeah, you got to skip a whole Stop bunch. Stop acting like they put out albums. <laughs> Dude. Wow, they all got the complexion of that dude, huh? Oh, yeah, they all got... They, they're they real half-Asian. They're heavy half-Asian. Well, we have not seen you or gotten to talk to you two in a long, long time. Kind of a bunch of these ding-dongs running around the house. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you this. I don't like that my granddaughter got involved with him. Why don't you put rice hats on all those kids and have them fucking pick your food? Hey, Kate, I didn't want you to have a bunch of tree walkers. Which yeah. is I would have. The irony is not lost on me that you're busting around a bunch of rickshaw drivers. <laughs> hey, I know you're trying to make a samurai sword by folding the blade, <laughs> but you folded it too many times. Ah, uh, let's go to this interview. You don't let a dink come inside, you idiot. <laughs> hey, you're lucky. Usually they get away with a dozen. <laughs> One more you got in your own Wu Tang. <laughs> All these slopes are supposed to be good at math, right? <laughs> hey, if I want to open a Nike factory, I would have asked you. Ah, uh, let's go to her. She music. looks like a shitty. Oh, uh, she mom. looks like a fucking psycho. 
Maddie? I hate to be mean to kids, it but they works. all look like Thai. They all look like Thai lady oh, boys. Hold on, let's because she starts getting angry quick. <laughs> Did you hear what I said though? Yeah, they all do like Thai. Li- like not one of them really became. She was a good looking woman, and he's a good looking guy. Technically, he's got like a Steve Byrne look to him. Yeah, and uh, and these kids are all kind of odd looking. Well, lo- watch. She goes fucking. She goes angry quick. She snaps at her. Yeah, I love dude. it. <laughs> it's quick because the girl's basically like, um, I, it's a very vague question. You speak up, Dink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she just burns her. He lights a right, cigarette. Come on, zip her head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, boy. I just went back to the to hear the question again. <laughs> Kara and Maddie Goslin are with us now. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Well, we have not seen you or gotten to talk to you two in a long, long time. And you're out because you want to let the world know that you're doing okay. Maddie, what, what would you want to say about how you and your sister and your family are doing? Um... Maddie, your words. No, it's it's your hard. Chance. It's a hard it question. Oh. No. What about you, Karen? Oh, Holy such a shit fucking. that was uncomfortable. Oh. Oh, this is great. How that not make news? <laughs> At the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, it well, this is uncomfortable. There what was the a whole was article. I think it might, be talk. The, it might be the same girl, but one of them, like there was a whole roadside thing with cops had to come because she didn't want to go with her mom. She wanted to go with her dad, and oh. the mom wouldn't let her go with the dad. You wait. Black Lou says, you, what, what's that? Because I've dated so many white women in my life, yeah. I know this show like the back of my hand. Uh, Maddie is a bad motherfucker. Yeah. That's the one girl you don't mess with in that family. Oh, she's and the she one talks that back. Just, She'll the, call her a bitch on live TV. She don't care. Oh, really? I like yeah. Maddie. Can we get a down with Maddie shirt? <laughs> I'm down with Maddie. I'm team Maddie. So uh, all the other kids fall in line. This is the one kid that's like, it's a. W- By the way, she's taking her time answering the question. I don't have a problem with that. Neither do Quite I. Honestly. And she goes, spit it out. Words. Say it, stupid. Say it, you Fuck fucking out of your moron. Flat fucking face, God oh, damn my it. God, every time you don't talk, you remind me of your dumb father. Oh, my God. Yeah, that sackless asshole. If he would have stood up, maybe we'd still <laughs> be together. I wouldn't even have fucked that guy if his head would have fit between my goddamn legs. How did I know his dick was like a Tommy gun <laughs> and was going to give me eight babies? <laughs> I don't know how he shot eight babies up in there. It was so shallow in my sniz. Sorry, your dad has a sawed off shotgun for a dick and got eight <laughs> bullets in me. Fucking buckshot. Now he's a DJ. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. He's a DJ. DJ. Ew. In Vegas? Is it in Vegas? Please tell me it's in Vegas. He just seems like it would be like a Vegas DJ. Oh, oh yeah. All I do is have fertility. <laughs> All I have is kids, 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 kids. All right, let's go back to this. So this is their chance to talk. This is the most wordless I've heard them all morning. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to speak it, The whole for thing them, seems contentious, though, where it's like, they usually talk so much, it drives me I'll fucking you, nuts. Let me like, tell you exactly. All right, Mom, why are you coming at us like that? Let me tell you exactly what this Answer is. fucking question, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Kate Gosling was trying to get a new show going about them growing up as Gosling. So this was, she got a PR person to be like, we can get you on the you TV show. You know this for a fact. I'm just, this is, I'm just spitballing here. Gotcha, but this okay. feels fucking right on the nose. Uh, they got like a PR person to be like, we can get you on today's show, kind of talk about it. Maybe follow can, up how long it's been, a long time. We so can draw up here. some interest and then maybe we can shop that to Bravo or a network where yeah. you could, you know, I know True TV is going down the whole comedy thing, but we can get rid of that. So we can go Bravo or History Channel because your pussy's history. Because there really is, there's eight kids, right? Yeah. And it's, uh, they're not all, it's not like, it's not octuplets, right? No, 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 no. She's not like that weirdo that had to fucking eight at once. The no, I think she had six at once. Did she? Yeah. She seems like she's so driven towards fame that she would do that. Oh, maybe do the Octomom. Remember, like, yeah, when no one cared after like two weeks, and she just had to come out and do porn. Dude, I like, love immediately that. Immediately was like, I'll suck dick on film. It wasn't even. She didn't even do that. She. The funny thing is, she's actually pretty uptight overall yeah. in the realm of doing that. So it's like she did like worse, like. She did like, no one will give a shit for 10 minutes after watching this video because it's just like a masturbation thing. And it's just like, eh. Yeah. It's like either you want to see a star that, or, or someone who's famous go full tilt, like like that fat, you know, the backdoor teen mom. Like, one thing oh, I'll say, she really I'll say fucking, about that lady, yeah. she did not let down. Like, she's still on MTV and just recently did a whole other uh, webcam thing again. She just. Made a ton of money doing a, one, a, you know a one-off webcam thing. All she does. Everybody hands go up. Teenage pregnancy. And they stay there. <laughs> and they stay there. <laughs> and they stay there. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well cut, Lou. Lou. Well cut. Fantastic God work, God damn it, good job. Black, Let's go. Black Lou, White Lou production. Oh! That's uh, amazing work. Ebony and Ivory Lou. Lou Twos. Lou Two. Two Lou's. The Two Lou's. Two Lou's. Two Lou's. Two Lou. Uh, like Patrice's album. All right, let's uh, let's go back to this fucking desperate stage mom. Sort of the things that you said in the magazine, that years later, they're good, they're fine. Go for it, man. It's your chance. No, you just said it. Oh, I said it. Well, let me ask you this, girls. I mean, to go out and be in People Magazine to say, hey, we're doing okay, why did you feel you needed to say that? Do you think people had the wrong impression of you guys, Kara? Do you feel, it feels like they talk after the show, that thing where they're, both re- re- fixing their makeup in a mirror and talking into the mirror. It goes, so you're just going to try to fuck me over on television, are you, you little bitch? Yeah, I should do it. Let's just go. And she's like, Mom, I don't care. I didn't want to come on this stupid show anyway. He goes, it's a stupid show. You wait till we get in that fucking car. She goes, I'm going to tell you right now, Maddie, you better count the seconds. My hand is not shoved inside of your goddamn mouth. Because we get back to the hotel room, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I'm going to fight but you. But guess what? And only in front of four of your siblings so you can't win majority against me That's you won't a- swing this vote <laughs> <laughs> I will not be voted out of my own home Maddie <laughs> let it play <laughs> I like that the twins are laughing at her hold on back up the twins are laughing at her That's great. <laughs> stupid bitch oh, oh Siri round eye <laughs> this goes super Asian <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Why are you guys talking like that out of nowhere? <laughs> Maddie, why are you talking Asian like that? Why are you talking racistly? I'm Ting Tao. I'm Tang Tao. Why are you talking? You don't get it, Mom, right? Tong Tao. Tong Ting Tao. Tong Speaking Mandarin to each other. I know, right? She so is. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm. I so is what? Mom. Oh, nothing. You're beautiful. So Ting Tao. Like that episode of Science. <laughs> we got to bring in George's dad. Hey, like, motherfucker! Like, why are you? Yeah. Uh, hit play right here because they need to say that. Do you think people had the wrong impression of you guys, Kara? <laughs> My gosh! What Kara yes is speaking? No. <laughs> Go for it. The interpreter. Oh wait, what? what? What is she thinking? Do people have the wrong impression of you? Oh. I wouldn't say wrong. I would just say not <laughs> Pause like it again. The fool. These kids have this girl though. Black Lou. Yes. Um is it you love this girl, the daughter. Yeah, she's cool as hell. Okay, I'm wondering I was I'm saying she might be the like an idiot piece of shit too cuz like for some reason she hasn't said one word when she talks. She cocks head and she's like, "Well, I don't know." No, I think for... she's uh, she's actively fucking with the mom. Yeah, she wants to throw her mom under the bus hard. Oh, her mom's hard. probably a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I like that she's doing it. I really yeah, like that she's, she's like, doing yeah. it. She goes, "I let all eight of you little cocksuckers <laughs> destroy my fucking blowhole." Do you understand that my pussy looks like a tent <laughs> yeah. after a four day camping trip? <laughs> You're fucking the last one. You just walked out of my queefer. Yeah, she goes, I'm not. Gonna lie, six, seven, and eight didn't even know what happened. <laughs> she goes, I thought I had a tummy ache for a little bit. <laughs> I just saw a fucking, I saw the blanket start moving. <laughs> goes, oh, there's more kids. She goes, I was already home for two days in the last three. You popped out. I thought the cat was in between my legs. <laughs> Turns out you and your sister crawling around. I mean, I guess like a little pressure. Yeah. A little pressure. Oh, no, that thing slid right on out. I water slid. <laughs> Last three hit the floor because no one knew they were coming. Boom, boom, boom. 20% of you just slip and slided right out of it. Yeah, I like that she's throwing her mom under the bus. Yeah, let's see. Keep going. Like, story. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people like think that um, filming like our show has damaged us, but it's only really helped. It's not really done. They're more aware of what is out there, the, you know, inaccuracies, things that are said by the general public, their father, whoever in general, because their friends talk about it at school. Oh, did you see that? She really fucking hit the dad. She goes, "Uh, you know, whatever her dad's saying. Oh, dad's split, right? Yeah, dad's gone. Dude, you could just... By the way, it's funny, it's funny, because she was like... She was letting herself just become like mommed up completely, and now he left, and now she wants to stay Hollywood. So look how much different she looks. Crazy, she's skinnier. Like the show, yeah, she's extensions, like yeah, her hair out, yeah. Sort of, and forced to kind of inform them, and um, I think 
The most upset, we talk about it a lot, and the most upset they are is because they get really frustrated that people assume certain things in our house, and they always say, but that's not how it is, Mommy. Why do they say that about us? Yeah, but let me ask you, Kate. I mean, to have them come out here to do a big magazine article, to have them come on national TV and sort of put them on the spot like this, is is that helpful to them? Is that yeah. the right decision, or does it kind of, that continued exposure, I mean, continue the injury to them? Um, I mean, there is no injury to begin with. and Liar! <laughs> liar! Oh, my God. It's seven- injury, injury. Hug. Their father is an unknown DJ. And, yeah. I have lost so much weight. I am <laughs> seriously gunning for a backup quarterback, the <laughs> oldest backup quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> I'm pretty close to sucking off Brian Hoyer. She goes, I got a line on Jeff George. I think he can make a comeback. <laughs> Jeff George. <laughs> I'm trying to... She goes, I'm the bitch who tried to steal Rodney Pete from Holly <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to lie. If Brad Johnson let me near his pecker, I'd suck it right off. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm about two dates from closing the deal with Trent Dilfer. Uh, she goes, I heard you. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they're, uh, I mean, she is just such an obvious piece of shit. Such an obvious piece of she shit. She does not read well. No. There's no redeeming. If you can find one redeeming thing about this woman besides the fact that she had eight babies. Is that even redeeming? I mean, it just by, seems weird. By the way, these girls, all the daughters look like fucking... Like uh, like the grudge ghosts. You know what I mean? Like they're all the ring, like, <laughs> the ring whatever it is. Anything was like Japanese schoolgirl ghosts. <laughs> yeah. They look like them. Do you guys? They all look they, like they don't really smile. They're always sort of like half frowning and, and straight mouth. Look at their go, mouths are like straight lines. I go a uh, qu- quick side question. Did you guys fight for Lucy Liu and Kill Bill? Yeah, they all got their father's eyes and their mother's fucking <laughs> uh, Sesame Street puppet head. Yeah, look she, at those fucking oval heads they all have. When you're a child of eight. Oh, she was on Dancing with the Stars? Definitely got dicked down by fucking that. Frederico? She definitely got dicked down by that guy. No, she didn't. He was getting blasted in his booty hole by his strong boyfriend. Oh, yeah, but they were giving it to her, too. She was in the middle of that. Oh, she's been in a fucking... How progressive. She's been in a I'll Be the Girl and Your Fucking Gay Off Sesh before. She's given ski pole handies to a couple of gay bros Francisco, kiss me now. Yeah, if we kiss over this bitch's head, maybe I can come. Maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> TV things that we do, obviously, I mean, I can't get them to do, at this age, at 13, anything that they don't want to do, as with any parent. So it's not like I, you know, force them to Including do it. this, this interview? A- <laughs> She's like, I can't get them to do anything. This interview is one of them. <laughs> I can't get this kid's fucking move, quite honestly. Move, idiot! You see her slap her in the back yeah. of the head. Man. Oh. Hey, you know, the Today Show asked us if, same with the People magazine, asked us if we wanted to do this. How do you feel Pause. about it? And- no way they asked. You definitely asked. You fucking liar. You definitely were like, ah, Today Show, people's doing it. Can we just peer it together? I need money. I'm <laughs> desperately running out of money. Eight children is so many expenses. Just, anyway, I'm flying out to have sex with Bo Jackson. <laughs> I go after all retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenny Lofton's going to fly me to Milwaukee. I'm going to fuck him. Kenny Lofton. <laughs> I did get fingered by Lenny Dykstra in a bathroom once. Goes, Frank Thomas is only into comedians' ex girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if your ex got stretched up by Frank Thomas. No, she said he did hit on her a lot, but she never did it. Oh, then. I mean, no, I talked to her like. Not long ago. And I brought it up. I'm like, did you ever fuck the big hurt? I see you brought it up. And I was talking and I go, remember when Frank Thomas used to hit on you all the time? Did you ever fuck him? She's like, no, he was very inappropriate. <laughs> oh, that's great. Like, yeah, he is. He's the big hurt. see why they call me the big hurt. And then you come up and you're like, I do. I go, I had your sneakers when I was in second grade. <laughs> so much. I love doing all-star baseball. You were the best. I can't believe you had your own game. Oh, it's so cool. You're the only reason I've ever heard of the White Sox. I just thought it was just the Cubs. <laughs> Them and Frank Thomas and Michael Jordan are the only reasons you ever heard of the White Sox ever. Yeah, and uh, Ventura getting his fucking shit pushed in by uh, Nolan Ryan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. He was on the White, White Sox, the right? Robin Ventura? Mm-hmm. Hmm? Yeah, nailed it. Let's go back to this. It's a family decision. So I think that it's really frustrating when um, there is so much out there that is not true. I'm getting to the point where I'm extremely frustrated and I don't spend time worrying about it mm-hmm. because I'm busy raising my kids and we know the truth and that's why they're here even though they're tongue tied mm-hmm. this morning um, to say that, you know, hey, we're okay, we're doing well. Would that be accurate, girls, to say? 
Would you guys want to do another TV show if you could? Yeah. You would? You yeah. could, because it was fun or because you like kind of having your lives out there on display? Um, do you girls need help? Uh, yeah. I notice you guys aren't responding to anything I'm saying. Does she feed you regularly? <laughs> Are you beaten regularly? Is there food in the fridge? Just just ask about the show, please. I just want to be on the show. I just want to make my mom money. My mom, mom needs did we money. Do good? Did Mommy. we get the show? Did we get the show? She goes, well, I have a policy where three out of the eight eat nightly. Five. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Dude. Love that John Gosling is spinning the ones and twos. Lou? He's spin, spinning 4-1. What is... What does that mean? Spinning for one? I don't know. It's TMZ. Hey, no, Lou, can you handle this? Uh, what is he at? An in and out? I can battle this. Queef. No, dude. He's at Tony Luke's in Philadelphia oh. for nobody. Go back. He's at fucking Tony Luke's roast pork place in Philadelphia. Look at the sign. Yeah. Tony fucking Luke's, dude. <laughs> oh, boy. John Gosling got his first DJ gig for one fat chick dude, at a roast pork shop, it, roast pork Sports sandwich Center. shop in Philly. Sports Center's on in the back. Oh, this fucking poor dickwad. Dude, he's taking it so... By the way, I bet he's having such a better time than that, <laughs> that chick with all those kids. <laughs> this chick oh, yeah. is great. <laughs> oh, my God. She She's is nonstop. She goes, oh, my God, John, K plus eight. <laughs> she goes, that DJ looks like John from K plus eight. Oh, what a big, dumb fucking weirdo. But that's what you get when you fucking have kids to profit off it. I don't want to go away from this. Uh, let's take our first break. Um, before, first of all, before we take our break, actually, is this a thing uh, Matt in Chicago is asking, is lasagna more like cake or pie? Is that a thing going on the internet or something? I feel like I've seen that more than once today. I think I thought they were making fun of the fact that I don't know cake or pie. Is, is lasagna that what it is? more like cake? Is that what it is? I think he's just trying to make fun of the fact of the cake and pie thing. That, right? Is lasagna more like cake or pie? I don't know, ask him. He's right here. Matt? Yeah, guys. Hey, buddy. Hey, are you just referencing when I didn't know the difference between pie and cake? No, no, no! It's an, it's a real it's a real debate. Yeah, that's what I say. You said it's a real debate happening. Oh, it's way is, more is, like, is it, is it's it like all, cake. Is it all over the internet. It's cake. No, it's not all over the internet. It, it, it spawned out of a discussion talking about the differences between casseroles and hot dishes. Oh. And so while we while we were discussing it, I said, "Well, you know, it's just kind of like lasagna is a lot like cake," and it spiraled from there. And it was surprising how quick people dug in and picked sides, and they're like, "No way." Lasagna is way more like pie. And I hope, like, no, it's like cake. I yeah, hope I you'll agree, Matt. Yes, I think I'll agree with you, Matt. This is a no-brainer. It's cake. It's much more like cake. It's layered. Yeah, layered with goody ingredients. Yeah, see, that, see the, the opposing side, they like to argue the side that it's the chemical composition, the fact that cake rises. Oh. And lasagna is just kind of thrown together. It's more like a mix of things. But my argument okay. was you don't just throw noodles and and sauce and cheese into a pan and out comes pot, out yeah. comes lasagna. It doesn't matter though also, lasagna. but you're wrong also about the cake, like the cake rises, Yeah. Um, just as you have to make the noodles for the thing. The actual building of a cake though, when the cake rises, you have to like frost it. Usually you cut it in half and put frosting in the middle, so it becomes like layers. You still build a cake. Right. You build a cake also. Right. Preach! Right, exactly. <laughs> you bake a pie. Oh! And I'm here to tell you as I stand here I looking out at all I you pie eaters. I have a dream that one day <laughs> bake a pie! Well, wait, Jacob's the expert. Should we, we have an expert sitting oh, right here. Oh, shit, that's true. Oh, Jacob. Fuck, I'm sorry, Jacob. End the debate. Well, you do have to build a cake, uh, a cake, so you're right there. But then a pie is a crust with a filling. Mm-hmm. What's Which lasagna? is more like a lasagna. That's not true. But it's What's the filling? Layered. Would be the sauce and the cheese. Or anything. But there's no... What Anybody you, else really want lasagna right now? <laughs> but where do you see hey, crust? Call, with the, there's hey, no uh, crust because it doesn't come up to sides. Hey, call me Garfield. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I don't need to go all Garfield on you. Anybody else really want lasagna? <laughs> Uh, I, don't to, uh, I don't mean to go all Jim Davis on everybody here, but if you uh, else feel like I hate Mondays and I want some lasagna. What's lasagna? Do you mean cheese and sauce pie? <laughs> oh, you mean noodle cake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean pasta meat pie? Oh, you trying to get some of that pasta meat pie? The pasta <laughs> tomato pie? Um, 
Jacob, so where are you at with it? What's your final decision? Ultimately, this, is a lot. this one, this one always tears you apart. Yeah. Ultimately, I'm siding with you on this, though. You think it'll kick? Oh yeah, man! Lay it like cake, and they stay there, and they say yeah, stay there. Luda, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> it's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, the late, great Tom Petty. Doing Tom Petty all week on the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio Series XM95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. Hey. Going over stage moms, Kate Gosling and her fucking sick-ass DJ husband, John Gosling. Just Kate, Kate Gosling, cake lasagna. Cake lasagna. It's all happening here. Let's watch the rest of the clip from Kate Gosling with her two daughters on the Today Show, which they say they speak out, but then the daughters don't speak out, and then the mom gets pissed. She has such resting bitch face. Yeah, she really is like, hey, you idiots are going to get your faces scratched off later. Yeah, it really, I mean, she's not a good person. Oh, you want me to say it? Okay. Um, We're not virgins. <laughs> you want me to say it? Okay. We fuck lots. Yeah. Kate doesn't even know it. I call her Kate. I call her by her first name. I have no respect for her. Yo, Kay. Kay. <laughs> Get out of the way. Anyway. Um, it was it was fun. I really miss it. And you do too. Kara, Kara does. She's just not going to say it. It's a lot of fun opportunities. And, um, you know, it, it's... If it happens, it does. If it doesn't, you know, it doesn't. And For instance, I got to give a hand job to Tom Arnold. Pretty, and that's pretty cool. She goes, <laughs> so technically, uh, a part of Roseanne came on me. <laughs> I mean, this woman is so desperately in need of a television show that she just keeps being like, if a television show comes from it, then it does. And I hope that's what happens. But if it doesn't, I can... <sighs> I, I don't can't want to kill any of them. They're too big. I was pretty drunk making out a party with Don Adams. TV's <laughs> Inspector Gadget. <laughs> what was he? Agent 99. Uh, what the hell was that show? Uh, smart. Uh, get, smart. get Smart. Maxwell Smart. Maxwell Smart. You know, TV's Maxwell Smart, Don Adams. <laughs> she goes, not not to brag, but I was at a key party with Cheech Marin. <laughs> a key party. Everyone threw their keys in a bowl. I didn't get him. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. She goes, I'm just tearing through lines in a bathroom with Glenn Close. And then it turns out it's not even her. It's just another <laughs> lady. And I'm there with the stuntman from Thunder in Paradise and, and a voiceover actor. It's real sad. Um, and I'm like, someone get my babies a show. <laughs> so anyway, I'm in a heavy pet sesh. I'm in a heavy pet sesh with Luke Perry. And <laughs> and let me tell you, he does not look 94. Just uh, Jason Priestley's there. Have you ever been power fucked with the entire Bare Naked Ladies catalog? <laughs> she goes, by the way, you know what they called me that night? The Peach Pit. <laughs> Why? Because Dylan and Brando are hanging out. Because everyone came and left. <laughs> <laughs> so, the end of this clip. She goes, I'm pretty sure it goes, I didn't fuck him, but I'm pretty sure they sent the video to bag. <laughs> <laughs> Brian often greatly made decision. And um they're just really regular everyday Not awesome true. teenagers. 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 Oh you got your, we know you got your hands filled. What are you whispering? A little bit more fabulous, sorry. She said a little bit more fabulous. You're like, I'm give you just a few regular more compliments. Teenagers. Oh, okay. This is right. weird. <laughs> Well, this is really, really weird. It's strange. It gives me an odd feeling. I don't like it. Let's move on. Yeah. Well, I, well, I want to go. I want to stay on stage, moms. Who else but, is uh, there? Uh, oh. Kate Gosling. Well, there's some. The I think you should probably find great videos of stage moms being bizarre. I mean, there's the obvious. The one is the uh, when you know Borat was it Borat or was it Bruno that had them stage moms? Which one was it? Was it Bruno? I think it's Bruno. Yeah, because his, yeah, his kid was going to be... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was going to put his kid in the pictures yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. what those parents agreed to. And by the way, we don't take the call, but Mike and Astoria uh, is right and solves the problem. Lasagna, more of a cobbler. And then he's right. No! It is. It's a cobbler. He's oh, right. Mike, shit. Oh, shit. Mike? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, how you doing, Mike? I just want to make sure you're on the line so you can hear this happen, Mike. You're right. Yeah. Lasagna is more of a cobbler. All and I do is win. Oh, oh Mike, Mike, Mike. Everybody hands go up. Proper definition. 
Ben is tegen de heer. Oh! Yeah, um, good job, um, Mike. Um, but Christine's bringing up a video of a show that's just infamous for stage moms, dance moms. Oh, right. This is the whole thing, right? That's like, like showing they how made a whole show of people are. That's right. And they are... It's amazing how you can even shine a, a spotlight on them for themselves, and they don't realize they're being crazy. Like, you're living through your daughter. You're damaging her. She hates what you're doing to her. <laughs> they're, I mean, and I they're like, no, nope, she loves that you're crazy. She's absolutely... She's like, mommy, I want to go there. Mommy, let me do that. What did you search, Christine? Stage moms? Stage moms freaking out. Oh, all right. That's a fun <laughs> That's search. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Shoot, I see a movie. Yeah. So she's not doing anything else between the movie and now. Um. I don't want to see them on So You Think You Can Dance, kids. I don't want to, th- them doing anything like don't that. Don't worry, Maddie's not going to be um, dance on So You Think You Can Dance, kids. Maddie's not going on that, so. All right. We have four more competitions. <laughs> By the way, it's the t- the same exact score they use for uh, a long time. Uh, fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be performing it. So you think you can dance, kids? Everyone knows the North remembers. If you say she doesn't dance, then I'll fight by your side. I'll fight for your queen. Your dance queen. Dancing queen, <laughs> only seventeen. I oh, fucking look hate. at these sad, nothing to do during the day, p- fucking ladies. So I ran into the uh, it just like face to face with the MTV, the first MTV VJ who works here. Uh, the dude has got a lot of facial work, dude. When you get oh face- yeah, he is whack. That guy looks like a fucking wax <laughs> fucking looks like a wax pair. <laughs> Dude, when you get close with someone, Mark with, Goodman, when, right? When you get really close to someone with facial surgery, you just notice how incredibly smooth their face is in an odd way. It doesn't have normal human face. I know it's all this weird. Like it looks like someone made him out of like it's still made out of like dark clay. Like they haven't cooked it yet. Yeah, but it's weird because you get close to it, and you're like, why is your face so smooth? <laughs> yeah, because it's just been tightened back. Yeah, what are you saying? I can't tell. He had work. You think it's... Oh, yeah. yeah. I, if that's his the head's guy... Got, his head's got laces in the back like a corset. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a preview for Thursday's show, but he's basically... Marilyn Manson was wearing his face. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, that skin is stretched out like the Book of the Dead from Evil Dead. <laughs> but it really is when you get... Like, you go to L.A., you guys are just there, and you see people with a lot of work. I mean, New York, there's a ton of people with a lot of work done, and you just see it, and you're like, fuck, your face is smooth. Um, uh, Chris, New York cites Dina Lohan. Yes, historically oh, shitty. Dina lot- Lohan. Uh, yeah, real piece of garbage. Uh, breaking news: This can't be real, and I want to make sure this is not real because if I, I'll, I'll pull the curtain, let you know what Dan's doing during the commercial breaks. <laughs> if we should stop this right now, because this, this is a thing. Alex, you have some breaking news in Arkansas. I know this is from Arkansas, so I don't know if I could trust this. You guys, uh, I've been with you, with you guys as fans since you started before you even had the show. It's hilarious. Oh, thank you, you had man. Your girlfriend- you had the girl from Long Island. I was hooked from that day on. Oh, yeah, the Joy. Boone, Joe, yeah. The, Joe dude, the, the Boone County mating call with the Oxycontin model. Oh, yeah. I, was, I had to pull over. I was laughing so hard. But Thank you, Alex. Guys. Hey, I heard real quick. Uh, a, a, leave uh, Porcelain Epstein alone. He's a good DJ back in the day. And B, <laughs> I heard that Wawa, they just found out somebody found a bunch of maggots in the ranch dressing. I thought I might pass that on with you. That was last what week. did you, you just say? I, I'm sorry. I'm going to need you to walk that Listen, back. It's, a quick a, it's online. I know you guys, that's like your church and I'm Christian, so I say you should worship. You know what? We almost planned an entire uh, Let me tell football you this. trip around going to uh, Wawa. Uh, if I can, and I'm going to speak I for even, myself. You know what? Real, real quick, you guys are East Coast. I'm from Arizona. I live in Tucson. We're, we're, uh, Oof. What's this, we're Where do you live in Tucson? I live right on the north side, Miranda. But I live, oh, I, I used to live right off. I, I used to live right off Ina Road by that Waffle yeah, House. I, I know, I did. I live right there, uh, right there. Anyways, for that's years. where I um, I lived. That's, I lived there for a year. We were neighbors. We good. didn't even know it. Yeah, exactly. I've been there for my whole life, but sometimes too. But long story short, Wegmans is the supermarket. I, I've never been to that. I was like. This is like a supermarket where nobody buys. They just it looks like it's untouched every time you walk in it. I think that's how you say it. Is it Wegmans or Wegmans? Yeah, Wegmans. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's like a it's like it's like a fantasy grocery store. But that's a grocery store. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Anyways, look up that Wawa thing and make sure that's true. I don't want to. We're gonna that. look up Wawa, but can I just tell you this real quick? Uh, you stick with them, good and bad times. I'm still with I don't them. Know <laughs> if I can stick with those maggots in the ranch dressing. That's tough. You don't know if that's let's just hear, one bad let's, outbreak. Let's, that's true. Let's hear the story behind it. Listen, Thank you man, for the call, Alex. Thank you for for shining a light on this. And Very can important. I just say, man, in the age that we live in, what happened to a little thing called fucking loyalty, dude? It's a bad batch of fucking ranch. Well, There's I'll tell you always... this. I'll tell you this. Flat out. Never in my life, nor would I ever think of a reason. I've never had ranch dressing at Wawa. No, <laughs> you know never why? Asked for that. I go home to the bottled Hidden Valley. Yeah, what am I going to? You know what? You're right, dude. What am I going to Wawa for a fucking salad? No, am I an asshole. You know what I do? I get mayo. I get mustard. All fresh. All fresh. Never had. I'd say it's Hellman's. If I've had a maggot in Wawa, that was one delicious motherfucking maggot. I'll tell you this. Then Dan Soder eats maggots. <laughs> <laughs> I go down with the ship, baby. Yeah. Yeah, Did we find me, the story, Christine? Call me the violinist because I'm playing with the Titanic all the way in the water. <laughs> I'll go all the fucking way. Still got my violin. Uh, I'm still eating mad hoagies. <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm wolfing down hoagies if I'm in the Jersey, Pennsylvania area. Is everybody on the show through this porthole in the other studio, Joe? Jonas, <laughs> yeah. uh, all old, all different Look, times of his life. <laughs> he goes, hey, how full is the phone booth when you all try to turn into Superman later? <laughs> Why is everyone having a perfect side part? In now, room? New York Post is reporting: man claims he found maggots. Let me see the in man. Wall, wall sandwich. Let me see the man. Is this some motherfucker trying to get? Look, first of all, look, look at those crazy. Look at those crazy affordable. <laughs> Affordable uh, gas prices. Gas prices. Go it's back up. Go back up, Christy. Let's just embrace that. Look for at a that. Second. First off, for unleaded, you're looking Buck at a dollar thirty-five. Buck thirty-five. Premium one hundred seventy-nine. I'm sorry. Is this nineteen ninety-one? I mean, come on. That's Skirt just print. crazy. Now, let's say, a man claims he found maggots in a sandwich he ordered from a convenience store in New Jersey. To call it a convenience store, in New York Post. Fuck you. He bought a... Chris Garcia tells the Trentonian he brought a buffalo chicken cheesesteak hoagie Saturday from a Wawa store in Ewing where he lives. He claims after he took a few bites, he noticed sauce from the sandwich was moving. The 22-year-old said he found two maggots moving around his sandwich. Garcia's mother recorded videos of the maggots crawling on the sandwich wrapper. A spokesperson for the 750 store chain says Wawa inspects its stores daily and holds itself to the highest standard of quality. You're goddamn right it does. Garcia says he was giving a refund after returning to the store with the sandwich. Wawa also, of course, has stores in Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and Florida. This just in, Chris Garcia is a fucking liar. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Let's I'm going to do the video. I'll watch the video. Come on, know. dude. Go you ahead. made me watch a dildo get stuck in a woman's butt. That's funny. Oh, hell no. This thing will crawl on my bed. Huh? Hell no. I mean... This is what my son found when he ordered a sandwich from Wawa. I mean, come on. I mean, what fucking Wawa does this lady go to? Ewing, New Jersey. New Jersey. Oh, dude, that is so rough. I know, but I'll tell First, you this. I mean, I Can I tell why, you this? Why would you Sans know? the maggot? That sandwich looks pretty goddamn good. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, this whole sandwich, uh, quite honestly, this is why I don't believe it. Go back. For, you hear that voice. That voice like, damn, my son, go get a sandwich, and you come back with this. And then you see the sandwich, really? And they ask for cucumber? On their sandwich, what kind of j- that soilous, person? That what kind person of soulless jerk off puts cucumber on a hague? I'll tell you who. It's a pickle. Somebody. I'll tell you what it is. Okay, you know what? That's more redeemable. <laughs> a, bu- a pickle on your buffalo chicken. This whole thing falls the fuck apart for me. Ah, you were just. You know what? This is gonna have to be. This is gonna have to be one of those stories that we just have to wait it out and see how it falls. Buffalo well, chicken cheesesteak. Wawa's denying it, and you know what? If Wawa's denying it, I'm denying it. And I'll wait. I feel like that woman's voice comes with maggots in your house. My name is Dan Soder, and I stand with Wawa. I take a knee for Wawa. <laughs> uh, and near Six Flags. He went to the hospital to get checked. What? He found the sandwich contained two maggots. Oh my gosh. He said he saw the buffalo sauce and ranch dressing moving. Then he showed a video of the butt. I mean, like. And what is that? What does the Ewing Wawa look like? Ah, uh, but here's here's where Wawa. Way home from Six Flags. Wawa. Here's where Wawa stands up. The company says they take every complaint seriously, and the Ewing incident is undergoing our detailed authentic uh, word. I can't say an assessment process. Authentication. 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 Authentic- there it is. 
God, I'm dumb. Wait till Thursday show. I say a real dumb shit. I would say authentication. Authentification. 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 authentication. <laughs> this um, is becoming being, a funny. Becoming being from uh, New Jersey, I can say that Ewing rings a bell as a shithole, right? Right, Black Lou? Yeah. Oh, the Lou's agree. Ewing, you're a shithole. So quite honestly, it's their fault for going to a fucking Ewing Wawa. Yeah, yeah dude. Got to get Dale Kel Canny. Now, I want to stay on top of the story, because if I know Wawa like I think I do, if they go, there were in fact maggots in that sandwich, this location will be shutting down. Yeah. Completely. We're, not, we're taking back Burn our franchise. Burn it to the ground. We're taking back our franchise in this one. Can't have it anymore. By the way, I've seen things change from a Wawa to something else. I've yeah. seen Wawa pull franchise. I mean, sure. you're talking to a guy that has a Wawa hoodie all loaded up in my shopping cart ready to go, and I was going to take orders from everybody else on this now. <laughs> but I mean, like a Wawa change from a Wawa, but keeps all the... It looks like a Wawa still inside, but it's just not called Wawa anymore because yeah. they pull the franchise from you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Become a Welsh Farms. Yeah. Or Cumberland Farms, God forbid. God forbid. Why would you ever want to fall down that far? A Cumberland Farms? Cumberland Farms was a shit when I was a kid. But they, because I was a kid, just wanted, like, you know, a sleeve of chocolate mini donuts. <laughs> yeah. Cho- don't they have their own chocolate brand? They do the now. Bars are we had right. this in Rhode Island a while back. Not this last trip, but a while back. We got a bunch of local Rhode Island candy. It was fine. <laughs> Cumberland Farms can- candy, it was fine. Wawa, if Wawa started making chocolate bars, I bet they'll just be fantastic chocolate. Of I mean, course, they the just pretzels. Care. Everything they do, you, I'm sorry, but usually when there's smoke, there's fire. There's no smoke here. Okay, there's no smoke. I've been to Wawa. I am uh, 33% white trash, and I will tell you this right now. I know for a fact that Wawa is a nice place. And they wouldn't do this. And if it happens, and if they're right, and then I'm sorry, if these. And I'm going to take early judgment here. If these scumbag liars who put fucking maggots on their thing, mm-hmm. on their wrapper, if these scumbag pieces of shit are fan to not be lying, uh, Wawa will take measures. I'm not giving up on Wawa. I, we will be at Wawa in October. I promise you that Dan Soder and Jay Okerson will never give up on Wawa sandwiches. Maggots, fleas, hell, Ebola. We'll be there. <laughs> Next Thursday, I'm going to go watch the... Uh, I'm doing some work in Philly that day. Can you go to Thursday night game? Well, no, it's in it's in, uh, it's in in North Carolina, but I'm going to go... Panthers? I'm going to watch it in Philly. That'll be fun. And that's going to be a... Uh, I was going to say I was going to do Wawa, but that might just be wait. a cheese stick night. Wait, 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 wait. Are you coming back on Friday? Coming back to New York Thursday. City? Thursday night. You want some Wawa? Yeah. Yeah. You want a little while while Or so does think in two weeks after that? We got the Eagles game. We're going to Wawa yeah. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a family. Goddamn right. People that care about I'm each other. You guys up in Philly, we're driving back. Yes. Right now. Let's be great. And then we got the fucking uh stick or treat. That's right. house. Let's take a break and uh and collect ourselves because this this shook news, us. This shook us this to the core, dude. Jarring. It's very quiet in here. Lou's not hitting any sound effects or music. It's just a a weird somber tone in the room. <laughs> Wawa's been attacked. We are okay. Yeah, everything is fine. Wawa will keep moving forward. We will show our resolve as Wawa fans. <sighs> we will take this seriously, and we will still move forward. Um, we'll be right back. We'll take our second break here. Just hug your loved ones. It's the bonfire. Oh, I was okay. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, what a Sons of Gary classic. It's Tom Petty week on the bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J. Okerson. And yeah, I'm ordering Wawa shirts for the whole crew right now. Because that's my fucking commitment. You tell us they have maggots in their sandwiches, I say get me their fucking merch today. I'm Double Down Dan, and I don't <laughs> fuck around. <laughs> Triple D! Triple D! Um, I was just saying, once it's on the screen right here while you finish that up, is that uh, Sam Smith. Yeah, now skinny. Thin. When he came out, he was weirdly chubby and stern. Howard Stern, man, it's always he always catches flack for the weirdest shit. Like, well, he says he some- mentioned that him being like a like a big guy, you know, fat guy or whatever. And, yeah, and how he should lose weight and whatever he pointed out about it. And people just like that rain shit on him about that. Like, leave the guy alone, man. He looks great. It's like, well, then why is he now? Sk-? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he lost weight. So obviously, he listened to what he was doing. I know it's so weird, man. See, the other one he always had was that the precious, the precious girl. He said that she would never be a 
humongous star. I remember he caught a lot of shit. No for pun that. intended. Uh, she would never be like a huge star because like they won't make a huge star to somebody who looks like that. And she got all that burn off of pressure. And she's worked. She's worked steadily since, but she's not like a major star. A major star. Oh, look what just happened. We just ordered six motherfucking sweatshirts from Wawa. Hey, double. I'll oh. take mine. I'll take mine with maggots. Oh, I thought we were gonna do. All I do is win. <laughs> do it every time for everything. All right, bro. it's so long. It doesn't have to be paced out, but I wish it would happen every day <laughs> in my life at some point or wherever. God, I love Wawa. It's so good. So we've gone through. Uh, our crazy moms today. Yeah, we were doing we were doing stage moms and how kind of fucking nuts they were because we got brought up because DJ Khaled is was on uh, the relaunch of Total Request Live on MTV. I DVR'd it. Have not watched it. You said you were sinking into it pretty hard. Well, I didn't watch it at all. I kind of didn't even realize. I knew they were. I saw a promo where they're like. People didn't know what TRL even stood for. Where they're like, I was a kid when that was out. And you're like, yeah, well. I thought that was a joke, totally. I mean, yeah. Fallout Boy fucking remembers. Yeah, they were like, thank you for bringing it back. Can we please be there? Uh, <laughs> so this is their attempt at getting music back involved on MTV. But it's not. It's not. There's no music videos. There are. What? Jacob then what's watched the, it. Then what's now, the, I walked I in and everyone's like, you got to watch it. Wait, did shit. you watch it on this? Because they might not show the videos on this. I mean, I was told that could be licensing. Work, that there's no videos. There's no music. So what are I they? Re- could be wrong. What are they requesting? That's what I understand. When Jacob said that, Ed I was like, Sheeran had a, did a live performance. That's all I know. I didn't it, see a video. Hey, look up if Ed Sheeran was the only lo- music as part of the show. I it's thought the TRL? whole thing was to get music back. I thought that's what it was too. I was like, TRL's oh. a music show. <laughs> it's strictly a music show. But their new VJs are all social media um, kids. They're all kids with huge social media followings. That's Which the new is VJs. Crazy. Well, I mean, it's like here's what's crazy about it. TRL with the R. Can the world's most famous music show? <laughs> fam- can the world's most famous music video program survive without music videos? That's dude, being a how. Wow, dude, being a. Ha- I didn't even realize that was a thing. So there's being the- a house announcer is a skill, man. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like, yeah. You gotta be real uh, good at that. You know, an, M- an MC for some, you know, not even MC, but like a host, like hosting. Yeah. Is it's real. Well, so that's what it's I was telling. So I was telling, that's what I was saying to Lou, too, and Jacob before everything happens is like, you gotta understand, like, if you watch American Masters, the documentary about Johnny Carson, you see how much fucking work he put in as doing like local radio and then like MCing shows and like all the stuff. So by the time he got to the Tonight Show, he was already like, he had 20 years of experience working somewhere else. You know, he had been like, Doing a lot of shit, whereas now these kids are famous off YouTube, and they're like, "We'll give them this hosting position." It's like, dude, you've never hosted live audience, live the, audience. The, 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 you've you've raised. When people were surprised, they were like, "You're nervous, do Conan? Like you're nervous, do like you? You do radio? You've been in, you've been interviewed before. You've all this stuff. You talk. You get on stage. You big stage sometimes, and it's still like, I don't know, dude. But like, you got like, People don't like, realize. I've never had. I've never had like a sitting on a couch conversation that's in front a, of an audience before. I mean, but, I, but not, a, not like that. I've never been interviewed like that before. But I'm. But saying people are like <coughs> stakes are higher. But but they're like to you, like, well, you, you do stand up. So what's different about it? It's like, well. It, there's pressure to be sitting on panel on Conan and have Conan and to have that kind of interaction where it's a good interaction and people are enjoying it. That's a skill. I don't even That's know him. Skill. I don't even know him if he doesn't like me. Where there going to be a thousand things that happen there. But I'm saying the next time, and we talked about this yesterday, mm-hmm. the next time you go back, you're going to know how it feels to sit on that. You're going to kind of know the pacing. You're going to know how it feels. So your second time, you'll be better. And that's why by your you know second, third, fourth appearance, you're going to start killing. And people are like, this guy's so funny. But how but, low are their beliefs for the show? They would throw a bunch of like, no. I they, truly they didn't have a shot. I mean, Carson Daly had a gift of doing that. That's why he still hosts shit. Dude, like, but also the thing about Carson Daly. I'm not Daly's, a fan of his by any stretch. But, but I mean, he like, didn't start at Total Request Live. He started working at KROQ in L.A. He was a, D, a radio DJ. From the time he was too. Like, Jimmy Kimmel, too. Yes. Radio From the guys. time they were young. They were talk- I mean, I got into radio when I was 19, and it gave me a great background in order just to fucking talk into a mic and get paid to do that. That's a it's, it's a not not the getting paid part, but like just doing it every day, the repetitions of doing it. And that's why, like, with young comics, whenever they're like, how do I get into comedy? It's like, just get on stage. That's the only advice that every comic gives. How about just the vibe of this room versus... 
two years, two and a half years ago when we first came in, yeah. it was like, all right, whether we were ner- but more nervous on a daily basis than we are today. We come in and we, you know, you know, it's like it's going to come bullshit know, for two hours. Yeah. We've just done it. We've, but we we've done a zillion have, of these shows now. We have a, we have a, a system of how we prep with with the articles you guys give with which things you guys think we might want to make fun of, and then it just goes from there and we have fun. But the back, but the problem is, is people don't in today's current culture they're not seeing the hard work that goes into something because it's an American Idol culture, which you you had a bit about that on your special yeah. and it's very true where it's like people look at the Beatles Ed Sullivan wasn't their first performance they were in Europe playing nightly night in and night out and honing that shit so when that they broke through they were a fucking tight band mm-hmm. I think it all has to come down to though it's like they don't care about the the piece they're putting out they don't care about the performance they don't care about the all they care about is there a lot of eyes that we'll see Advertising. because Coca Cola gave us yeah. two point whatever million dollars to be on the first episode of. Uh, so how many people are going to watch it? Yeah. Are you going to get us a good host who's going to do a good job, or are you going to get us a host that bef- for the six weeks leading up to it, they tell they get to tell three million people like watch Total Request Live. If you're my fan. You better check this out, bro. Exactly. And it, well, here's the. I mean, there is a there is another that side. that means more to the advertisers. Yes, sure, yeah. but there is another side where now that there's more avenues like Hulu and Netflix and all this stuff, now shows are getting a chance that maybe necessarily didn't get a chance, mm-hmm. and they're getting a chance to survive. Like, remember Family Guy was canceled twice because yeah. Fox just didn't get it, and then people were downloading it online and buying the DVDs, and they're like we fucking love this show, and Fox was like, oh, we fucked up and they brought back family guy and now it's been on 15 years I mean, now he uh, runs fox f- five this this he's on his fourth or fifth show now yeah three cartoons uh but, two or three live action but the, the the negative side of that is people being like oh you're famous on youtube that automatically will translate to you hosting a live request show which is like do you know how fucking hard that is do you know how hard it is like you know dick clark worked for those many years because he was really good at doing something that's very hard. Like, Ryan Seacrest is everywhere because he's good at doing that shit. But the thing is, what, what they're going to see is, like, who... Now, I'm very curious uh, on the business aspect of this. Like, what are the advertisers? Oh, because the thing is, Because the thing is... T-Mobile. Who you have watching I mean, like, here, who you have watching here, uh, by who they're booking on this, is going to be a lot of people who have to go... Mom, dad, can you buy me? Yes. This isn't, you, you can't be selling to the consumer of the actual, like, person with the money. Yeah. On this. Well, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Does Coca Cola do that? Or is it, like, the new phone that has a yeah. movie projector in it? Yeah, exactly. You know, the wall projector in it. You, you push that hard because you want your kid to go, that's all I fucking want for my birthday yeah. is only this movie projector phone. And then they go, I followed her on YouTube and now she's going to be on TV and I got to watch her on MTV. And right. then you see it and they don't really realize it's like, well, they're doing a shitty job. They're not doing a good job. Do we want to know what the old TRL was? Because Melody here in Utah says this is what the old show was. She has the rundown of the old show. What was the old show? Melody, Melody, you there? Hey guys. Hi, Melody. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Um, huge fan. Love you guys. You're Thank awesome. You. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, the all star used to be that he would basically um, just do, like, a countdown. They would have it all set up for him already. And then, like, all the teenagers would come and sit there and feel cool because they get to be on TV. Yeah, that's right. Was it was 10 videos. And it was, like, the same. In that hour, you'd see whatever it was, five videos. In that hour, you'd see the same five videos every day until someone, like, knocked them out of the yes, countdown. Yes, where right? they voted them up or right. voted them down, and they would, like, get knocked off. And I remember, like, Britney Spears was on for, like, 115 days, like, that like, set a record. And they would retire videos. I remember they always yeah. used to go to middle of Times Square to see people freaking out, and you'd see the yep. people with the signs. Because they could look up and see people in the... I've, done, I've looked at that window before. It's pretty neat. Yeah, You've been I in that studio before. fucking bombed in that studio for Nick at Night. I oh, really? fucking bombed in that studio. The mom's night out thing? Yeah, I always remember, like, I ate my dick in the TRL studio. <laughs> like, the one of the worst bombs I've ever had in my life. It was for a TV show. Yeah, mom's night out. And oof, they edited me off the show. Never even Brian was running that. Yeah, Brian was running it. I got paid, and they didn't... Nate had to find me in an Irish bar two blocks away. <laughs> I, I walked out with my makeup still on and went to a bar and just got fucking hammered. Why did I like you? I was doing jokes about my mom being a slut. Because it was the worst audience in the world ever. Was they were awful. The, they were the number number one. They were the worst audience in the world. Number two, they were all gassed up on red and white wine. <laughs> and uh, I remember the MC was like, "Are you ready for a man?" And they're like, ah! <laughs> and, then I, and then I came out and I was like, "My mom's a slut." And they're like, "Oh, you!" I fucking bombed. I bet she's By the way, a doll. I bombed twice. 
because they had me come back the next day like maybe it can go better and I was still waiting tables and I remember taking that call as I was waiting tables and I was like dude I don't know if I should go back tonight like, I'll come back and I ate it harder that's when I disappeared and got drunk. harder Melody did you used to vote on TRL no, no, I didn't. They didn't play the whole video, so it was kind of bullshit. Nah, I get it, but if you were a young... Like, way you back and flick bean the Sean Colvin. Am yeah. I saying that right? I don't know, but I remember... Uh, I remember <laughs> I remember when Carson Daly retired, and I used to watch it for Vanessa Manillo. Man- Man- she's married to Nick Lachey now. Oh, yeah. She's smoking yeah, nice. hot. So here's a clip of, of Carson Daly premiering the Slim Shady thing, and he was like, you know, Carson... We should get the one of him premiering the... The one that those that were one of the worst days of my life when he's premiering the pink. No, the new um, Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews with the hugger. Remember I tell you, I thought I was going to get that. Oh, yeah, with Judah Freeland. The Judah Freeland got. I wonder it. if that's even up here. Uh, uh, Melody, thanks for calling in. And then yeah, let's. This is so. This will show you because we have clips of the new one. So this is clips of uh, you can exit all these moms, all these sad moms, sad ass, stupid stage moms, Pick ugly, me dumb. Up, love. Every day. Yeah. Pick me up now. Every day. Pick me up. I get it. All right, cool. Uh, no. No, nope. that's all right. Do some shady. TRL premiere of the day from our buddy M. Time for our second TRL premiere of the day from our buddy Eminem. This is for the real Slim Shady, which I should mention, M actually played this uh, song for me himself when I was down in Cancun, Mexico. And because of some of the particulars of the lyrics, uh, it was cool that he came up and was like, yo, I want you to hear this before you hear all the craziness. And um, the song is fat. And we only have the video now. You'll notice about 50 M. Well, that's fucking like, hilarious. Uh, the video is fat? The song is fat. The song is fat. The song is fat. Oh, man. That does not date well, Carson Daly. <laughs> I mean, because yes. now, now you see him go, goes, the song is lit. Oh yeah, but I bet it will be. I mean, that's so, gonna date. I bet that dates. Like I bet shit. You, you can catch. I bet there's a bunch of great. If we can get somebody to like cut up a bunch of like Carson Daly, like just like quotes at the time, oh, like yeah. fat, dope, oh, off, does anybody the, know- off the chain, oh. off the heezy, just through time. Are you guys noticing his black fingernails? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, he had a couple of black. Yeah, he painted his fingernails. There's also fucking- by the way, it made me want to do that. Didn't, uh, make, didn't make me. Ter- didn't turn me off to it. Made me uh, want to do it. He was also bagging Jennifer Love Hewitt at the time, and that was peak JLH. Oh, Jennifer, oh, I know those. Big soft titties. <laughs> Remember those big old soft titties. <laughs> yeah. Remember Ethan Embry got to fucking feel up on those in that movie Can't Hardly Wait. I loved Can't Hardly Wait. Let's hit play. Um, it's off the record, Marshall Math- Mathers, which is supposed to be out May 23rd. Hopefully that's still the date. Uh, M told us that he wanted the, his approach to the video. Yeah, the audio like, shit. Uh, he was like Slim Shady on steroids, and I quote, there's cameos from Kathy Griffin, Fred Durst, B-Roll from Cypress Hill. Uh, Kathy I couldn't join Griffin. the cast, but uh, I want to thank M for taking a look like who's uh, a lot better looking than me. <laughs> that was cool. And uh, we're glad to have it. it but see, he's like, you can just tell he's a radio guy. You can just tell he's a radio guy. He's moving. He's giving information. He knows how to throw it to the next thing. I was like, it's yeah. very like a... Uh, he seems like he hosts. Yeah. You know what I mean, like he hosts something. Um, he plays at a camera very, very well. He's just good. So let's go to modern day TRL, which is, wait, who is the, who's the VJ hosting? DJ, who is? Is it Khaled, you said? Oh, I mean, or is he DJ. a guest? He's a guest. And DC, and Jacob. Young, DC young Fly. Oh, wait, yeah. I DC only know him. I know he's a young dude who's got a bunch of face yeah. tattoos and he's, he, that he did, he hosted an episode that I watched. Of Gotham Comedy Live because I was like I want to see what this is about. Is I thought, he a, is he I thought it was a comic. It is the shittiest, it, but, but it is reeling with confidence. His his stand up. Oh, but it's so bad. So here we go. Uh, New Tiro. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Let's just see what's happening. So first off, they don't know where to go. So he doesn't know where to stand. Now listen. Along with Jason and many celebrities, you know, they have taken the social media to speak out against the violence. J-Lo, you know, who has been performing in Vegas, she tweeted, I love Las Vegas, feeling so heartbroken this morning. And Rihanna tweeted saying a prayer for all the victims and their loved ones, also the residents and the visitors of Las Vegas. This was a horrific... Having a guy be, like, sincere to you with a fucking uh, between-his-eyes tattoo is not easy. He's doing and it's not easy to take serious. Yeah, I mean he's he's kind of mowing through it, but he's not as bad as I thought. Keep hit, but let's just keep going. You just have a moment of silence, you know, so we could pray for the families and everybody who was affected by this situation. But right now, we need positivity, and mm-hmm. more than ever, DJ Khaled is the master of positivity. <laughs> so can you please take this one? 
because we need some words of wisdom, big bro. By the way, I want to point out the people outside are not that into it. <laughs> What's happening? They're usually outside in that little yeah. island they show where people are like screaming and everything. They're nuts. And DJ Khaled's in there, but they're just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. They go, Tell us when we are supposed to scream. They go, how late's the M&M store open? <laughs> you think they hired extras to do it this year? Maybe. Hit play. Let's go to DJ Khaled. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Did you know this was happening? I'll take this one from me. He's just sitting there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're just showing DJ Khaled sitting in a ridiculously oversized chair. In wearing yellow. what I believe is all yellow. Canary yellow. <laughs> he's wearing a bright canary yellow jumpsuit. And I mean, there is... Is, that, is he on a watch list? He's making sure everybody knows where he's at. Watch it. Look. <laughs> Listen, y'all know we're all about motivating people, and this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to take a moment of silence, you know what I'm saying, so we can pay our respects to the Las Vegas victims. All right? On the way. So wait a hold second. Hold on, hold on. Keep playing. Doesn't know how to take a moment of silence. When do I go? You're going to go right here. You hear him talking? This is the actual show. And everybody know MTV right let you real family and they put it up. I mean, it's on their website. They put it up. Yeah. Why do they do that? Why would Why you? would you do that, dude? I'm telling you, man. MTV is fucking falling apart. First of all, DC Young Fly comes out when he's got a a fucking tattoo, but. You're I, can't, I can't even. DJ Khaled sitting over there like the giant <laughs> Tweety Bird. He's sitting on his chair. I'm like, how do you sit? The guy's covered head to toe in yellow. <laughs> go back. Christine, Why can you go you back a little that? bit to show how just the colossal failure this is? I mean, like, like DJ Khaled it. just goes, we're going to throw it over DJ Khaled for a moment of silence. And they throw it over to him and he's just in the moment of silence. So watch, so watch, uh, so watch the whole thing. I know the audio, but just listen to the silence because it's just pure panic. There's a lot of it. So it's it's about 30 seconds of silence, but hit play. There's St. Cowan. And then look, they're like, Now listen, along with Jason and many celebrities, you know, they have taken the social media to speak out against the violence. J-Lo, you know, who has been performing in Vegas. Las she Vegas. tweeted, I love Las Vegas, feeling so heartbroken this he doesn't morning. have a good and Rihanna tweeted saying a speaking prayer voice. for all the victims and their loved ones, also the residents and the visitors of Las Vegas. This was a horrific act of terror. So... And I wish we could just have a moment of silence, you know, so we could pray for the He's family. Not, he should, he should never host Everybody anything. Everybody was affected nope. by this situation. He said, you know, but right now, we need positivity. Oh, way more than More than, than ever, DJ Khaled is the I mean, master of positivity. So can you please oh, take this goes. one? Because we need some words of wisdom, big bro. <laughs> Man, I ain't got nothing Would to say you about nothing. This one from me. Look, this is so awkward. It's in my hand. And then it just goes and they rate and they just keep playing. Don't, when it comes back, it goes back to him. They come back to DC Young Fly. Watch. Listen, y'all know we're all about motivating Oof. people. And oh. This is what we I mean. When you, oh. but, but if you had, if you had instincts, wouldn't you be like? Obviously, we're having a bunch of uh, technical problems. Yeah, because you know, like, yeah. I, 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 I don't think DJ Khaled knew he was supposed to be on right there. Yeah, I just like embrace the moment and be like, you know, hey, this is live TV. Everybody, you know we're working at the Kinks first day show. He just goes. Back it up. My see. lines again now. So we all know motivation Not- come in most positive ways of positivity. Oh man, yeah, it was. We we got to go go further. It goes about fourteen minutes and forty five seconds. Go to jump to that. Uh, but Lou too. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say. You realize he? I think he was supposed to pause for the silence. Well, first. here's well. This is this right here. You're okay. right. He was supposed to do the moment of silence. So right here. Oh, we're all about motivating people, and this. Oh, is what no, we're this is do. it again. You just know, play. Uh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we can pay our respects. So he really doesn't. So he says right there, he goes, pay our respects, moment of silence. But then he goes, but what we need to do is throw over to DJ Khaled, who doesn't have a mic, who's just sitting in a giant chair. Well, for some words Oh, of that wisdom. was it. So he just... We need some words of wisdom, baby. Back Boy. it up. Back it up to four, uh, 1440. Then everybody know. 14, yeah, right there. To the Las Vegas. So this is moment of silence. All right. On the way. They're just doing a moment of silence. They're telling yeah. DJ Khaled where he's going to go. During the moment of silence. And letting everybody know 
right here from TRL family that we're supporting you guys. And we're always going to have y'all in our hearts. And we're going to pray. Always. For victim, always. And for everybody no, who was affected by the situation. And we're going to have wisdom oh, and words of motivation from Big Bro, DJ Khaled. You know I'm all about motivating and inspiring the people. Sure. I'm about the people. I'm about the fans. I'm about family. I'm a father now, too. Yeah, no, we I'm definitely know that. Father. He's about carbs. My son's name is Asad Khaled. Something. He's my life. He's my. That is Middle Eastern and a motherfucker. World. He also has another kid. I work for him. He does. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has like an older There's kid. There's so much going on in this world. All I keep thinking about is my son. <laughs> By me saying that is, if he has another we have to kid, stay focus. There's no, on what? He does, on. He does. He I'm always going to say this. I'm right. always going to tell you this. What? Love is the key. Okay. Love is the answer. Okay. Love is the solution. All right. Love is the most powerful thing in the world. Love is the love is the problem. And love is the equation. Love, <laughs> love is the little sprinkly things on a roof when love. you touch a ceiling and it comes down on you. Love is a is a laugh. Positive love thing. is a, a twinkle of sunlight coming through a window. Love's a maggot in your love. Wawa sandwich. <laughs> and you got enough money to afford that Wawa sandwich. <laughs> love is knowing when to toss it to a DJ Khaled and when not to toss it to a DJ Khaled. Love Love will be looking to your right, dumb motherfucker. See, I ain't holding no microphone in this stupid-ass big chair. Love would know during a moment of silence to cut your, your producer's <laughs> mic, because I can hear the instructions. Love be telling a motherfucker not to get it between the eyes tattoo. That was love. That's love. <laughs> just criticizing. You don't know love? <laughs> hip like is always... It's just... Anyway... I got a son. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> I work for him. <laughs> I work for him. I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know what corners are. His son's name is Lion in Arabic. Oh, fun. <laughs> Yuck. It is just one. I was wrong. Our father. My son's name is Asad Khaled. Mm-hmm. He's my life. He's my biggest blessing in the world. He poops. I work for him. <laughs> I give him food. He make boom booms three times a day. I'm not sure who the baby is, me or him. <laughs> I have to be explained simple things. <laughs> Like, where did the baby come from? <laughs> Was it when I felt lightning in my pants when I met his mommy? A lot of people say I shouldn't take naps in the bed with him because I might roll off on top of this motherfucker. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. He naps on me. <laughs> so how can I nap on him if he naps on me? I'm like a waterbed this little motherfucker. Do you understand? He might as well just be Swimming on an ocean. That's how big I am. Put him on my belly. Come get up here on Daddy Beach. <laughs> all right, Christine, let's watch the rest of it. Because he's just spinning. So much going on in this world. Good camera work. All I keep thinking about is my son. All these people acting interested. By me saying that is, mm -hmm. we have to stay focused. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to Hey, can to you cut this. to a guy in the I'm audience who penciled in his eyebrows? Yeah. Thanks. Can you just do a bunch of camera angles of... Uh, Vaguely foreign people. Yeah, what the fuck? Where are they doing this? Is this show done in Thunderdome? <laughs> Why the fuck are these people so all made up Yo, and shit? I love Thunderdome. I Yo. love watching two people enter and one man leave. Love is Thunderdome. <laughs> love is Tina Turner dressed up in all kinds of crazy shit. I love it. Love is having blue streaks in your hair while you sing. <laughs> Wait on that. <laughs> uh, let's finish this. Love right. is yellow pants on a non-Hispanic. Love is yeah. <laughs> love is the answer. Okay. Love is the solution. All right. Love is the most powerful thing in the world. Oop! Love just farted. If you don't love <laughs> tell them to leave the building. What? And if they don't leave the building, then you leave the building. What? I have a rule in my house. Everyone leave the building. No dark clouds allowed oh, in my whoo, house. Whoo, whoo, whoo. That was close. <laughs> no dark people allowed in my house. My dog will attack on sight. But also it's like... Damn. Simple. Walk away. From what? Or ask them to leave nicely. <laughs> kindly. This is great. Is that how you live your life? Do Monday you motivation. Life? Stay focused. If a bitch Don't try play. to vote, you bite her motherfucking hand off so quick. When you feel someone has a dark energy, maybe they're in line with you at the bank, <laughs> you tell them. I want, him, I want him to have very All Middle right, go, Eastern... Here it goes. Wait, hang on, pause it. I want him to have very Middle Eastern values, though. <laughs> if someone steals from you, you chop their hand off. <laughs> yeah. 
If a woman is caught cheating on her husband, you stone her to death. My son is in a Lamborghini stroller. <laughs> and my wife, well, she will never drive. If you see her ankles, I will murder that bitch. <laughs> she shows more than an eyelid. I will kill her. <laughs> I took my son to his first ceremonial clit circumcision. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he loved it. He loved it so. He looked at me and he said, "Papa, his first motherfucking words, right there, the clit, right there, the clit circumcision. You're gonna pop that thing off." <laughs> <laughs> he now wear that shit as jewelry. Major keys. We the best music. Uh, uh let's see what he yeah, finishes it. <laughs> Don't play yourself, okay. award yourself, and love yourself. Thank you. Love is the key. Yeah, it is. Another one. Thank you, big bro. That's the way to start us out right. Oh, dude, it's and the way he suspects, man, he is very unlikable. We- yeah. He is very, very unlikable, DJ Khaled. That really, he goes, the other one. And he just goes, back to kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Phil, excuse me, I gotta rest and just think about all these great philosophies. Uh, and DC Young Fly, I'm telling you, all he is is he fits in every piece of clothing they want to fuck. They go, perfect! It. It's, all, it's 100% what it is. Do you have boy chest? Do you have odd face tattoos? Perfect! <laughs> he really is just a fucking bucket of bones. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we're gonna go to break. Let's just watch. Hold on, what's he saying? It's time for our next guest. Help us make history out in Times Square. Give it up for the winner of the 2017 VMA Artist of the Year, Ed Sharon! Oh my God, pause it. Let's go to commercial because I can't wait to hear him be interviewed by a guy who doesn't really know much about him. Hello, how are you, everybody? <laughs> I'm, I'm Thomas' dad. He's so fucking creepy looking. And he oh. goes, hey, Redhead, what's up, y'all? Oh, this crazy bookworm with all them tattoos oh, scaring me. Boogity wiggity goo. You know what's up? You know what up, DJ Khaled? Is Kyle? this the red? Me, me, moment of silence for everybody. Uh, love is the answer. Love that is creepy love. English ginger the answer. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll come right back. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. You know we're always going to send it. It's the bonfire coming to the radio series XM 95. Big J Okerson, Dan Soder. That is the late, great Tom Petty. Rest in peace. Tom Petty week all week on the bonfire. Just going to send it. Uh, no. while, we're lame- while we're lamenting deaths, it's the, uh, let's lament the integrity and comedy and hosting. Oh, TRL. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like TRL. Do you have? Do you know what is the taco thing up? Do we have the taco thing? They're just requesting tacos now. It just seems like it's a parody. They're not requesting. T- requesting what they're. What are they requesting? Yeah, There's the nothing requ- to request. Tweet what you love about tacos. That's what they're requesting that you write about tacos. Well, you know, you know. Good evenings, everyone. It's that time of year again. National Taco Day is almost here. Now the official holiday what? season kicked off September 25th. And we got to know, how are you celebrating this year? Okay, maybe it's eating tacos for every single meal. There's nothing wrong with that. Or maybe it's giving the gift of tacos to all your family and friends, making you the hero. You really can't do Taco Day wrong. Yeah, you can. Unless, you know, you're not eating tacos at all. What do you love about tacos? Let us know right now using the hashtag TRL Taco Day, hashtag sweepstakes. Well, good news. Uh, replaceable white guy. I'll be putting a girl in my sleep number. Fuck taco. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I, just, I just wanted to see Jacob's reaction. I just did that for Jacob's reaction. I knew it would get him mad. I just knew it. I knew it. That guy was doing a terrible job, even at like presenting. Like he's laughing. First of all, how young are these people? Why does he have so many forehead lines? He's so young. <laughs> he's just an incredible. Be Child. that good? At, how can you be that good at Instagram and 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 Twitter, and have so many lines in your head? There's a uh, yeah. I don't He's know. got a young old face. Man, it's so uh, I like. I couldn't imagine coming up in comedy now where that actually like people are like, um, oh wow, Decider. dot com saying MTV's TRL revival is the most offensive TV reboot yet. Maybe. I mean, you guys got a fucking point. I'm on Decider's side right now because it looked. I mean, we watched probably two minutes of it and it was garbage. 
I mean, yeah, it's they were- just a different show. I don't understand why they would call it TRL when it's just not that thing at all. But why? I thing. told you about but that. Why meeting. not bring it back? Even though I know all videos are accessible always on the thing. Yeah, people will call it like. People will give a shit about making Taylor Swift's video number one. Yeah, versus having Cardi, it bumped out by versus, Cardi B. I thought yeah. it was going to be like that with social media now. So yeah. like maybe doing tweets polls or and, tweets yeah. or whatever. But I'll tell you this, man. I had a meeting, a very awkward meeting with MTV a long time ago where they brought me in to like see if I would want to you know, like work with MTV. And they just none, none of their ideas were good at all. They were like, we're going to do a game show. Oh, they tried to give you one of those holdings where, where well, they just I keep, you, they keep you around. Yeah. yeah, I just had a meeting about it because I think they were kind of interested in that and I just finished doing guy code and they like knew I was so they're they kind give of, you a couple bucks not that's gonna be forever no it's not forever money not forever no they didn't give me any money I didn't know same same yeah. that that deal yes but many people oh, we, know we know got yeah. that deal I, th- I think I, I think I know six people I can yeah. name who got that deal and it's it, it, it's a it's a basic thing that a network kept, you, kept a 20 year old in an apartment by themselves yeah and they a 22 a, year old whatever you also can't do anything with any other networks it's like a thing where they kind of want to lock you up but they I think this was like a feeling out process and it was one of the most awkward meetings I've ever had in my life because it was two very young girls who were like uh, what, what do you think is dope? Oh, they're like, what's dope to you? What's vi- oh the Love Shriners dot org? It's back on the there's, commercial. There's a new Shriners kid, and it's oh, Jesus H. Oh God, <laughs> it's so hard. You know, it's funny. Kids. I've never been more happy. There's this extra monitor here, just blocks out sick kids from me. Oh man, it's really tough to watch. And this is some, yeah, right. she turned it on. Tosh point uh, One of the hosts of uh, the show, DC Young Fly. Oh well. I was going to say, with that meeting with MTV, there was a point where they were like, what would you want to host if you were to host it? And I go, if you brought back pop-up video. I go, that's the only way, that's the only thing I would want to host. They were like, like, and they were like, it's VH1. <laughs> I, which I said, I go, it's VH1, but it's owned by Viacom. So you could sure. probably yep. get the licensing pretty easy to transfer from company to company because there's been shows on MTV that I have gone to VH1 and, and I don't know about vice versa, but there was this point where she goes, okay, well, <laughs> the assistant got so gassed up. Not the lady I was talking to, but the assistant's like, oh, that could be fun. I don't really remember it because I'm kind of young, but like, what if we call it like cool stuff you didn't know? And I go, no, you just call it pop-up video and then people might age would want to watch it and young people would want to watch it because it's a good show and they go we could call it like, crazy <laughs> stuff you never knew i'm like no that's not what you call it you call it pop-up video you should have walked in and be like i want to do a, a show called catching up with martha quinn yeah where we just see what's been going on with martha quinn she goes, who's martha quinn i go exactly you should know that yeah you should fucking know that. martha quinn's a big deal here <laughs> i think she fucked the mtv astronaut <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure she's married i'm pretty sure she's married, she's married to the moon man wah, wah, wah. Uh, but it really was like, so you start, oh, I love pop-up video. It's great. God, it was great. They're like 700 foot of Sean uh, puffy, uh, puffy pants were yeah. used in uh, to make the pants for... But they had jokes. Puff Daddy and Mace had big problems with their outfits. They're oddly kind of doing pop-up, it's like pop-up video style for Impractical Jokers. That's great. I love yeah, that. It, inside jokes. Yeah, called, inside yeah. jokes is kind of like pop-up video for that show. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, she also owned the Windbreaker company that made the suits. They like gave like this great information. Fuck, I loved this show. Shot over three days, four locations in New York, and the yellow suits turned into hot air balloons. Didn't... <laughs> 91, bet me, me now. Get it, Mace. Oh. Mm-hmm. So me down, down. Kuda. Hey, please don't wear that video. I'm dead. Please don't wear them. Please, please don't wear them suits in the video. Puffy, you look stupid. It looks like Mace was such a fun guy, and then all of a sudden he's like, you know, I'm just gonna go become religious, and then I'm gonna come back shitty. <laughs> yeah, I'm and then I'm gonna come, come back somehow less talented. <laughs> um, but yeah, that used to be. So I mean, that's kind of like MTV just wanted to do. You could tell they were probably like TRL's a strong name. Let's bring that back, and let's just have nothing be in common with the original show. That's it. Until they did. Like, do we have a bunch of Instagram celebrities that we have probably these contracts with? We'll bring probably way here. bigger contracts with. Guys, we're rebooting Little House in the Prairie. We're going to call Little House in the Prairie. You know what's it's going to be? It's a black family in an apartment. It's going to be dog fights. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what? Guys, we are going to do Knight Rider, but it's dog fights. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a talking car. Not not a one. Not a one. No, no talking no, no, no. car. No, why would there be a talking car in Knight Rider? It's just called Knight Rider, but actually it's a it's a contest. It's a show is a contest. Tug of war. Live yeah. tug of war. <laughs> Growing pains. It's about mm. pregnant ten year olds. <laughs> um yeah, it really is I wanna watch this uh because I'll tell you what, this is gonna have to spill over to tomorrow a little bit. Yeah. Because there's so much more DC young fly I wanna get into because I wanna watch he's got a lot of stand up comedy. 
out there, and I want to hear what the comments are. If just because he's a, if he, just because he's famous to his people, mm-hmm. if the comments are more like this guy should get better at comedy before he starts ramming it down everybody's throat. Uh, I don't think they really care about that. A lot of people who like these Instagram celebrities, they just want to support no, them. No, that's what I'm saying. So I want to see if the comments are all just like, you're the funniest person ever. Yeah. Like, well, that's what I said. It was funny when Sal's on a show sometimes in, in stand-up, if there's comments under like a video of the show that came out. Yeah. I remember they were doing, a, it might have been a roast battle. Or it was, a, no, what was it, Christine? A, a mashup show. Mm-hmm. Where Sal got on stage with someone. And there was a bunch of other great comics in the show before he got up there. Yeah. It was going to be him and Ron Bennington. Great. But everybody before them, it's just like, oh, the fans are just like, uh, and this, by the way, I think Sal's hilarious. Nothing yeah. to say about that, but it's like, they don't even come out and just say Sal's hilarious. They go, God, I wish these people were better than, I wish these people were as good as Sal. Like, the show fucking sucks. Like, just put Sal on. Why don't you guys watch Sal and learn how to be fun? It's like all that shit, which is awful to Sal to do that. Yeah. Like, he hates that. But I bet it's a lot of that. I bet it's just going to like, DC on Fly, it's like, it's, I don't understand why you don't host Jimmy Kimmel Live. Like, he fucking sucks and you're so great. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that really kind is, of shit. I mean, I think that's probably a, one of the big knocks on young millennials now is like, they like what they like like and everything else is stupid so it's like if they don't know it then it's dumb which is like you find that that laps over in our that crosses over into our world where you're at a comedy club and two young girls are talking like it was in dallas where these girls were just talking like ladies you can shut the fuck up you're talking like we are just talking about you you're like no you weren't shut up and then after the show they're like I've seen Amy Schumer like five times. I'm basically her. I'm like, no, you're bred. You're I'm basically a- her? Yeah, that's what she said to me. I was like, I don't even know what that means. And uh, <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, that's great. And, but it's also like, you know how angry she would be if she knew that her fan was ruining one of her friend's shows just being an intolerable bitch? Uh, because- funny you should say that because uh, last week I was in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah. I was heckled the entire show by Amy Schumer. <laughs> she's just, she's just, she Amy, goes, Schumer, Amy Schumer, a friend of hers, talked the entire yeah, show. Yeah, and by the way, they didn't even heckle you, they had a conversation. You, <laughs> go, just talk. you go, Amy, can you stop? And you go, so, I'm She big. goes, Oh, God, isn't this so me? It's so me. <laughs> this is so me right She goes, now. You know what? I've done like five shows <laughs> for this girl, and it's like, I met her out here, and, and it is you like, get it. she's so me. I would be so embarrassed if a I'm fan so of mine was like ruining a show and then being like, yeah, sorry, I love this guy. And you see that sometimes. Oh, like in the name of yeah. this person. Well, yeah, not yeah. in the name, but like they, they, they're they like, I'm a fan of this person, so you know I'm cool. And it's like, no, nah, you're a, kind of a bigger piece of shit. I'd like to think somebody wearing like any of the merch, like Skanks merch, something like that, yeah. tend to be, from people who tell me who have come on the show. Always great comedy They show fans. up a lot, and they're comedy <laughs> fans, man. They do tend to come out, and they're comedy it's fans. It's knowing what you're getting TRL that's the problem they don't know what they're giving and no one knows what they're getting no so one knows what they're getting so I, th- everyone's expecting TRL which is a fucking music video countdown show not a show with DJ Khaled giving life advice about how his baby's his boss but it's hosted by just social media presence people I'm telling you right this now this we have to carry this over tomorrow this because why, I'm going to get into there's a transgender one it's like they've also very purposefully done the well, the diverse it's casting. across the board everyone's got to be something but it's not you got to understand something It's and you see this with a lot of major networks it's no longer about product it's about profit so they just want to know how much money they can make so they don't give a fuck about taking a risk on something that might necessarily not work on paper but then becomes the next legendary show. I mean, you look at you look at Atlanta, Donald Glover's show, won fucking like six Emmys yeah. and, and FX had to be sold on it like several times. Like, trust me, do this show. And FX usually takes risks but they're like, we don't know why we would take this risk. And finally they do and now they're like, oh, well, we love it and we love Donald. You know, it's like after they win all those awards, like we knew even Louie, Louie, when Louie came out, you remember that? He was like, give me the lowest amount possible per episode and then stay the fuck away from me and let me make this show. And I'll just deliver it to you. And I'll deliver it to you. You won't give me notes. I'm going to make my own fucking show. And they came out and they're like, FX is genius. They're letting Louie. But it was like, no, because Louie had to take the smallest amount of money in order to get that creative freedom. But with TRL, there's no such thing as, there's not even any creative freedom involved. They're just like, grab the TRL, grab these Instagram celebrities, put it in a bowl. It's like single mom dinners. They're just like, Instagram celebrities, TRL, here it all is, eat it up, kids. So they're probably stupid to acknowledge in that ad that TRL stands for Total Request Live. It's the dumbest be, thing in the world. Requesting? That- but again, like they feel like things do come around and maybe it fails, but like, hey, MTV, like, put out something with fucking music and videos. I also, don't understand what this is. Like, try to be the, cool. The, people make music videos for every single still constantly. There's always, but it, because they're accessible whenever you want to, like, well, why would people wait around? But they don't have to wait around, but if 
You want them to watch the show anyway. They will watch the fucking video. I mean, people try to act like like because of streaming that they're like, no one wants to wait for th- anything anymore. Why is there not video true? music awards? Look at, look at, Why do they exist? There's no point. They're not the hub of the music. Yeah, I mean, it really is. They're just getting so far away from music that you're like, MTV, either get with music or just be like, hey, we're going to be an entertainment channel now. We're no longer music at all. If it was all. called the iTunes Awards, it would make more sense. Yeah, or if it was Honestly, just... if it was just, it, it's, it's odd because it really Vivo, is... Vivo uh, Awards. Awards, yeah, you know, Vivo Video, whatever makes all those big videos. But they, they're getting these all these celebrities, and they're like, do everything, just do one thing well, one thing well. I remember there was an Instagram post. I'm not going to out who it was, but they're trying comedy, and they were singing, and then someone was like, hey, why don't you just do one thing? And they're like, I'm trying to be like Donald Glover, and you're like, that's eh, Donald Glover. It's like, stop, do do one thing well. Just we're try gonna, to do one thing. We're right. going to rip into this more tomorrow, because I'll tell you the one thing I know for sure Dan Soder does well, stand-up comedy, and you can catch him doing it. <sighs> At Laughs Boston, everybody. Oh, uh, but first. <laughs> October 19th yeah. through October 21st. But you know what? That's too far away for my taste. Yeah. Yeah. If you live nowhere near there, all the way across the country in San Diego, who are crying because not only do they lose their Chargers, but then the Chargers also stink. <laughs> Dan Soto is going to be in San Diego at the American Comedy Company this Thursday. That's right, everybody. Just two days from now. October 5th through Saturday, October 7th. After that, he's going to be at Left Boston. As we said, you can get all your tickets at dansoto.com. So, and make sure you check out his new half-hour special as part of the stand-ups available right now on Netflix. You're damn right. And you know us? Raleigh, North Carolina. You can celebrate because Big J is going to be a good night. Buckle up. This Thursday through Saturday, uh, October 5th through the 7th. And then he's going to be at the Funny Bone in Columbus, Ohio, October 19th. Through the 21st, go get tickets at bigjcomedy.com. That's right, Raleigh. Take your shirts off and spin it around your head, spin it like a helicopter. You could Petey Pablo it, or because if you do, if you probably do take that up, you know what's going to happen? You'll win. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Everybody, hands go up. Concentrating on one thing. And they stay there. Luda! We'll catch you guys tomorrow. It's the bonfire.